Hey guys, it's Leash, and welcome to another episode of Car Confessions. Listen, I am just leaving work. Like we are still like ending the summer set, well, not summer, the, the um, school year, and heading towards summer vacation. So I'm just like tying up loose ends and you know, getting things together and preparing for the summer. Thank God. I went and got me a cookie here from Insomnia. Because I normally don't eat these cookies, but today I'm just like, I want an Insomnia cookie. I don't know what that was about, but shout out to Insomnia for having vegan cookies. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Um, and for those who might not know that, like, yeah, so Insomnia has, I think, is it three or four? Um, cookie options that are vegan. I just do the chocolate chip. I'm a chocolate chip cookie kind of kid. You know, pretty tried and true. Now, what would be fire is if they added some walnuts to these cookies. And then... mm -mm -mm, It would be serious fire. I mean, as I think about it now, I don't know, do any of their cookies have nuts in them? I don't know, because all all I eat are the vegan ones. And I was vegan when insomnia came around, or at least I think I was. Um, point of it is, I've only had the vegan cookies from there, so I really don't pay attention to anything else, but insomnia. Get some walnuts in this vegan chocolate chip. Woo! I'll be doing some damage. Fire. But, checking in, guys. How are you doing? What's happening? What's going on in your world? Hope you're well. Hope things are going great for you. Um, it's wild. As I'm chopping on this cookie, but it's wild because this morning I woke up and in the process of like praying and meditating, I was like, oh my gosh, um, what happened with the race with, um, Jamal Bowman and George Latimer. And I was like, okay, Alicia, do not do this. Like, don't get yourself, you know, out of your routine. Side note, guys, here's the thing. Like, I just passed this car that's, like, literally, with the tags, it's on, stopped on, I guess this, this is considered, like, not really an expressway, but it's a pseudo-expressway. And he's just sitting on the side of the road with his tags on. Nothing's wrong. They can see he's just chilling in his car. And I'm just like, What? New York City, as y'all know, if you've listened to Car Confessions, you know the ins and outs of driving in New York City and my uh, incidents uh, with these folks that call themselves, you know, safe drivers. Not so much. But anyway, back to this story. Um, Yeah, so I'm like, oh my gosh, wondering what happened with the race. And I was like, no, we're going to finish meditating. We're going to finish doing all of the things that sustain us first, or me first. And then I can worry about all the things that are happening in the world. And, you know, luckily I finished my meditating and everything. Then to find out, yo, people here are unbelievable. I was like trying to merge over, there's a bus. Child, people are just rude here. Like it's just, it's unbelievable how rude people are. Like, I was trying to merge over because there's a bus in the way. This car just, like, speeds by. Doesn't even allow me to merge over. Clearly sees that I need to, like, merge, but I digress. Um, But, yeah, so I'm, like, you know, looking at the news. Unfortunately, you know, we find out that Jamal Bowman lost the race. And initially, I was really upset. Like, just completely just crushed and just feeling like, you know, what is the point, right? Like, what is the point of us having these elections, right? I, I, I'm literally like just going through the motions, you know? And as I'm like going through the motions, I realize I'm like, Alicia, look at the evidence, <laughs> you know, uh, I believe it was 14 
was it million dollars that was put into this campaign against Jamal Bowman. Um, and if I'm saying that wrong, y'all let me know. But there, basically, there was a lot of money put in, put um, against him, you know, in order for George Latimer to win. And you know, like I said, I had to say to myself, like, girl, like, why are you shocked that this happened? Um, because the way things were going, it was in the favor of George Latimer that he was going to win. Um, and I had to just kind of like sit with that and just allow myself to realize where I am. You know, because you know, sometimes we forget where we are or who we're dealing with. And then there's something that just kind of like slaps you back into reality. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 that's about right. <laughs> like, seriously, you know. Um, and it really makes you question, like, what is democracy, right? Like, truly, what is it? Um, and have we ever been in a democracy in this country? It, you know, just questions to really consider. Because when you see these things happening, and you see all this money that's being put into politics in ways that are causing more harm than good for the average everyday American, you're just like, what am I doing? Why am I paying these taxes? Why am I, you know, doing half the things that I'm doing in this country to uphold the, the status quo, right? I mean, it's just like little things. You're just realizing, I'm waking up to, at least I should say, I'm realizing I'm waking up to that. It's just like, wow, wow. Like, I already knew as a Black person what this country was about. And, you know, trying to explain this to people all these years has been like, you know, screaming into a freaking cup, you know, if that's even a saying. But the point of it is, it's just like, wow, like what I thought was crazy. It's even crazier than that. And it leads me to also thinking about this whole idea or notion of who is really benefiting in this country? I mean, we obviously know it's the rich and, you know, billionaire status and, you know, whoever else that's a part of that particular group. You know, this cookie, I'm about to murder it. But, um, you know, like, why are we, why are we still following along the status quo? I was thinking about this last night too, even before I knew about the results with uh, Jamal Bowman or anything. I was like, why are we still playing this game here in America? Like, why are we still just falling for the okie doke and just like, well, that's just the way things are? You know, like, at what point are we going to get tired of that? I'm tired of it. I just don't know exactly what to do. Like, what's the first thing to do to kind of like completely um, stop playing the game, right? To completely like remove my piece off the board and say, "Hey, I'm done playing." You know, I don't, I don't know where to start with that, but I, I feel like we need to start with something. Um, any ideas would be great. Nothing that's causing harm because I'm not about that life. But um, um, but I also was reading something. It's like, and on the other hand, you know, it's like a lot of things in terms of revolution and creating change and things of that nature. A lot based off history has been by way of violence, and. You think, well, I mean, at least that's the way it's always worked, right? So it's like, we just got to get out here and fight for our rights, whatever that looks like, by any means necessary. And I hear you. I don't think that I don't. And trust me, I I feel that in ways you can't even imagine. But I'm just like, that's what we've been doing. And that's what history has shown us. And we're still looking crazy as hell. You know, like, what? 
And I'm just wondering if we could try something different, like expressing more love, compassion. Um, I don't know. Is, is it possible? Because it's something to think about, too. Because when you think about that, it's like the people that we're fighting against, I'm saying that in air quotes, they're sharks. Like These people are no joke. I mean, the things that you think about in terms of um, bringing down very powerful individuals, it can be really scary, which is why, you know, we're just kind of dealing with what it is. Like, it's just life is what it is living in America, living in, living on this planet, right? It is what it is. Cause it's not just here in America. It's on a global scale. If you look, I don't know if you guys saw the protests in Kenya, like people have had it. People have had it. And, it, and it's like, there's only so much that people are going to deal with and take before folks just start losing their minds and just going for broke right? Just truly saying, you know what? This isn't living. Nothing about this is living. I can barely afford to eat. I can barely afford to stay where I'm staying. You know, I can't enjoy this life because I'm constantly working to ensure that I have a roof over my head, food on the table for myself and maybe my family. If I have a family, like, Take care of my car, make sure it's functioning so I can get to work and so I can do all the, you know, it's, 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 a, it's this hamster wheel of just craziness. But it, and I don't know if I was saying this to y'all or not, but all of these things that we're doing and the way this system is set up, it was created by someone or someone's. I think I did talk about this with y'all. Uh, if not last week, at some point early in this month. But these are created structures that can easily be dismantled. And I shouldn't say easily, but they can be dismantled. Because I don't want to say it's easy and like, you know, we're being lazy or something. But this is this was all created, y'all. Like, literally all created. Like, think about that. Like, it's the way we have our government, the way it's set up, the way the judicial system set up, the way we work, that that system, all these systemic ways of operating in the society, someone or someone, like I said, thought this shit up. Like they literally was like, you know what? Let's do this, this, and this. It'll benefit really us, but we'll say it's benefiting other people just so they won't realize they're being screwed over um but people thought about how this all would work and it's been in operation for a very very long time guys and i for one i'm tired of it um i've had it uh just even down to the time that we spend at work, it's just too much. It's way too much. Like, I want to be outside enjoying myself, you know, living my life, doing things I enjoy. And it's so funny because, you know, my daughter and I were talking about like high school life because, you know, she's in high school. She'll be a senior, y'all. I can't believe it. She's going to be a senior in the fall. Crazy. Um, but she was just talking about the social scene at her school and how it's not um, as community driven as she would have preferred um, because of, it's a very academic um, and inf- like, just highly academic influenced. Like that's really what it's about. And just ensuring that kids get into either Ivy leagues or top colleges um, in the country or even, I guess even globally. Um, and so she was just talking about that and just like how the people where she's at, like that's just not a part of the process. Like they don't have the opportunities to really come together as a community and just enjoy each other. And I'm like, I hear you. I hear you because 
I feel like a lot of that has also been a part of, or has been by design, how we now operate um, in the society. I feel like COVID was like the thing, right, that really tipped us over the edge when it came to like not communing with one another. And it kind of stayed in that lane. And then once we were able to come out, we were kind of like coming out more. But I feel a, a bit more isolated in some ways than I did during COVID, if that's even possible. Because I feel like I'm just always at work. Like I'm in this crazy, um, like video game or some shit, like where... I get up, I work out, I take a shower, I prepare my breakfast, now I'm preparing lunch because we don't have lunch at the school right now, and I go to work, do the things at work, right? And then I prepare to come home. I cook, I whatever, and, you know, we luckily really take the time to sit down and eat with one another. Um, It's not perfect because sometimes we'll, we'll be on our phones. Uh, but we're together. Um, and then after we've had like a little bit of conversation or a lot, just depending on the day at dinner, then my wife and I will clean up the kitchen, get a shower, and then it's time for bed. And then it's preparation to start the shit all over again. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I feel like one of these little characters in a board game that's just kind of like, do, 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 do. You know, like, there's no real human experience in some ways. And so it's like, I have to, like, really make it a point to do human things. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, I don't always go outside. Um, but I, you know, try to make the effort to go out. I mean, luckily my wife, she's, she's really good about trying to get me out of the house and this and the other um it's just hard it's hard and I have to do better with just making myself get out and not get so engulfed in things that are happening in the world um even though no there's no even though I just have to do that I have to start really stepping outside of all the things that I am experiencing in terms of current events and enjoy this life for what it's worth. Um, Because, you know, every moment is not promised. You know, the next moment is not promised, I should say. And uh, it is just, there's nothing those moments, right, or how do I say this, for the most part, me living my best life and doing what I can is beneficial to the collective. Um, And I'm terrible about uh, really acknowledging that because I guilt myself into thinking that, oh my gosh, I should be, you know, enjoying all these things because there's so many people out here that wish they could have blah, blah, But I have to remember, like, my enjoyment, my celebration, my laughter, my happiness is dependent on me having hope for another day. You know? It is the truth. And I'm telling you, this morning when I woke up and I saw the news about Jamal Bowman, As I'm saying that now, this is the moment where it's like, you have to enjoy life, Alicia. Because these people, when it comes to this politics and whatever else as it relates to this country, they're going to do what they're going to do, you know? I'm still going to be, you know, fighting for the rights of humanity because that's just who I am. But at the same time, I still have to take the time to enjoy life and not allow myself to feel defeated in 
you know, situations where these folks want you to feel defeated so you won't keep fighting. And so for those of you that might be feeling the way I feel, that are completely in this sense of like defeat and like, what the hell are we doing? Start doing things you enjoy. Seriously, start creating some joy in your life. Find some good things to do. Replenish yourself so we can be, you know, in a good headspace to continue this fight. Because I'm telling you, there is real fatigue when it comes to fighting for human rights. Major fatigue. Um, But, you know, my fight is hopefully the fight for everyone. And I would hope that those who are in this fight, in the similar fight that I'm in, are fighting for the rights of everyone and not just a small percentage of people that may benefit. It's for it's for everyone. Um yeah. So my challenge to myself and even to you, like I said, if you're like me out here just feeling like why even bother? <laughs> you know? Take some time to enjoy yourself. Do some things that you love doing. And just know that There are people out there like you that are fighting the good fight and aren't willing to just give up, you know, because like I said, it's so easy to fall in that trap and, you know, that's the plan. The plan is for us to fall in that trap and not want to continue to fight on, but I have to think about like my ancestors and I'm in my family members that have passed on that I knew were fighters that were about fighting the good fight and how they would want to see me out here fighting for what's right and opening my mouth and, you know, being a voice of encouragement as well. Um, Cause that, those are the types of people and women, particularly the women that I grew up around. They were people who did not have a problem opening their mouth and saying what they needed to say when it came to fighting for the rights of people. Um, They would tell it like it is, you know. I mean, I'm I'm a bit more buffered in that situation in comparison to them. But, um, yeah, that's my stock. And it's like, why stop now? Just to get better and better at it Um, and really... you know, bring, you know, bring praise, I guess is what you want to say, or I want to say, or just bring honor. There it is. Bring honor to my ancestors and to those who have come before me um, in fighting for equal rights and, and just being able to just exist without having to, you know, have all these bells and whistles, like just to be. It's enough. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, y'all. And I feel like these car confessions have been, you know, on the same road to just trying to figure it all out. But it's like, you may never figure it all out. But at this point in my life, on this day, rather... I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing happiness. I'm choosing things that are going to uplift me and uplift others and to fight for the rights of all that are marginalized at this time because the saying, I'm pretty sure you heard it, if, you know, if some aren't free, no one is free. And I could be, I'm probably butchering that, but you know what I'm saying? Freedom is literally what it is. It's freedom, free. There is no freedom if certain people aren't free. That's just what it is. And people can twist and turn it in any way they want to make it fit their narrative, but bondage is not freedom. It's just not. 
Um, discrimination is not freedom. Um, you know, it's just not friends. And um, I just want us to get to a point of realizing that until we truly start seeing each other as human beings, until we start really seeing that this, and I always say this to y'all, this scarcity mindset that, oh my gosh, I got to get all the things because I don't want this other person to take it from me because I may never get it again type of mentality. It's just continuing to break us down. Um, And it's not allowing us to be at our optimal level as humans. It's just not. We're just staying in this low vibrational sphere of nonsense. And it's like, we need to elevate. We need to, you know, increase our mindsets or or elevate our mindset as it relates to how we see each other and, and the benefits of living this life in a prosperous manner. We all can prosper. I I believe, not even believe, I know we can prosper. Like that there's no doubt. Everyone has the ability to prosper and not have someone without. And I know it's hard to believe because you know a lot of us grew up thinking, you know, that that wasn't possible, but it's possible. And it's unfortunate that we have these people in power with all this money that are pushing the narrative of of scarcity because it fits their narrative because it allows them to continue to make more and more money. And I, I, listen, I don't, I would never want anyone to be without money, but how much money could you possibly need at this point? You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to just living and, and thriving, billions of dollars, like, I mean, unless everyone has billions of dollars, I guess. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to do with all this money? Like, what are you doing with it? Honestly. I just don't get it. I don't get it. But, you know, I don't know. If I, if I got it, I might I'm, I might be a terrible person and try to make it happen for myself. I don't know. Who knows? I'm, this is at least just spewing. But, um, yeah, y'all, let's start enjoying ourselves. Let's start doing things that make us happy. It doesn't always require us buying something going to the park it's funny i saw a reel the other day where somebody was like walking around in like a forest or something and they're like oh my gosh all this beauty and all this peace is free like it's free like i don't i don't have to pay for it i don't have to do anything but just be here and enjoy it and so if the financial thing is an issue go take a walk in the park go to a um a national park go, or, or just a random park in your area. If you're able to go to a beach or to a lake or somewhere and just enjoy the a river, enjoy the water and just be there, it's free. Or at least most of them are free. Some of these beaches, that's a whole other story. But if you can go somewhere where there's free um, and, you know, enjoyment, do it. I say go for it. All right, y'all, I'm home. I still haven't finished this cookie. You know, I'll get to it. It's a lot. Very sugary. You know? They're good. Um, And if I was rating an insomnia cookie on a scale of 0 to 10, I'd give it like a fierce 6. Um, And I say a 6 because I need those walnuts. And I think I just kind of like dial back a bit on the sugar. It'd be a one, be a fierce 10. Real talk, but I'm still gonna eat it because I pay for it. You know, bygones. But, um, as I always say, y'all, let's just keep on keeping on. And, um, I'll see y'all next week. I love you. Bye.